Simon, let's jump into it. I've got some questions to ask you. First one being like, how, how has, you know, season two, I guess, being on tour now with being a father, how has it gotten easier? Is it harder to get away from home now? I think it's getting harder, especially with a pregnant wife. You just want to like be home and support and help as much as you can. Um, cause dealing with a toddler, not being pregnant is hard enough, but I think being, uh, uh, 30, 35 pounds heavier than you used to and having all these hormonal changes, like it is not, I don't know. It's just not easy. And also he's getting more and more aware of when I'm leaving and what it means oh. when I pack my bags and it's always just kind of heartbreaking to like, just watch him. <laughs> <laughs> watch him at the door when he's crying when I'm going and you're just like oh it's so it's such a bummer like and every time I just leave the house now like he doesn't really understand how long I'm gone for because he doesn't speak English yet very well he's only two years old but yeah every time I leave it's just a heartbreak for him because he doesn't know if I'm going to come back in an hour or in two weeks like it's just yeah, yeah, it's not oh. easy, and it's definitely getting harder the more aware he gets of what's going on. Are you teaching him German as well? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of <clears throat> struggling with that because the problem we have is that my wife is Puerto Rican, so she is fluent in Spanish and English. I am German, so I'm fluent in German and English, and I don't speak Spanish, and my wife doesn't speak German. So if she teaches my son Spanish, then I don't understand when she speaks Spanish to him or he tries speaking Spanish to me. And if I teach him German, then she doesn't understand what he's trying to say. And I don't oh. know if that's an ideal situation for parenting that's already pretty difficult, especially with one parent traveling so much. Um, so I'm not doing as good as a job as I was dreaming of when I thought about this whole process. And it's really not easy. It's, it takes a lot of discipline to talk to your kid in a language that your wife doesn't understand. And it kind of sometimes feels a bit weird. Um, but who knows? I'm, I'll keep trying. I have books in German that I try. I try to put on German um, little like video clips or something when I can just to like at least give him something. And who knows? Maybe in like a year or two when he can communicate a bit better, he's, he's going to like want to learn. And I have some hopes that I'll oh. figure it out. And maybe I'll do a better job with my daughter. Who knows? <laughs> but I feel like I failed a bit on the trilingual <laughs> uh, project that we had kind of tried to do, but failed. The Spanish is more likely to happen than the mm -hmm. German right now because she's um, around him. Yeah. And my wife's mother. So my mother-in-law, uh -oh. uh, she like only speaks Spanish to him. So that's much easier. Yeah, what age? Because, like, what age do you does like the human start understanding the difference between languages? If, I don't know if that question makes sense, but like, if you're trying to teach your kid, like, this is what a ball is, you know, you hold up the object and you're like, ball, ball. But then if you held up the ball, the ball, and you're like, ball, and then I'm, gosh, it's been so long, I don't even know how to say ball in Spanish. I thought I did. I thought it would come back to me. Yuli, any help? <laughs> Silas, anyone? I got nothing. It's El, it's seven, I don't even know it. El Balancesto is basketball. So is it close to that? Balan? El Balan? But you know what I'm saying? Like now you're saying. Oh, okay. Okay. So let's just say it was that. Now you're holding it up and saying that. I, to me, that seems like it would confuse a, a really yeah. young adult because you're or a, a really young child versus when you're able to like explain and they can under, understand like, hey, this is one language, this is another language. I I don't know. Is I, I I don't really have any insight on any of that. Do you guys have any idea on that? How that works? I mean, I I don't know. It's probably the best. I could also say, because who, who actually really knows what's going on in a child's brain? It's, it's so hard to know. <laughs> Apparently, the younger the kid, the more the brain is like a sponge and just wants to take in as much information as possible. And obviously, the sooner you learn something, the easier it is for you to like get it right the first mm -hmm. time. And the older you get, the harder it is to learn. 
um, especially with languages. I mean, you try to learn a new language like nowadays in our 30s and we're like <laughs> giving up after <laughs> the first day or two. Um, so I think it's okay to confuse your kid a bit and I think it'll be worth it in the long run. It just takes hard work and discipline. It's just something you kind of have to work through and it might delay those first sentences the kid's trying to say and communicate a little bit, but for the long run, I mean, it might be worth it. Your kid just starts speaking a sentence in three different languages. Like they do, they go from one language to the next to the next all in one sentence. That'd be, I mean, bilingual households do that all the time at, at home. I spoke. Uh, we called it like Denglish, like German, which is Deutsch. Denglish would be our, our home language where we would like speak a German English, just complete mm. mix because my, my dad would mostly speak English to us, us and my mom German and Spanglish is also yep. a very common phrase in like Spanish households. So it's very normal to just mix and match any, any kind of words in any sentence when you're, it's, when you're a multicultural it's, family. It's, it's easy to to lose a language too. Like my dad s- spoke fluent Spanish when he was a kid, and now he he doesn't. He can understand a little bit, but if he if he were you to be like, how do you say this? He he'd really struggle with it. Like he's forgot pretty much everything, which yeah. is kind of crazy to just forget a language. To me, crazy crazy to think like if you're fluent. Like I'm not super surprised. I haven't taken Spanish since high school. So, and I was never close to being fluent. So that's not crazy. But yeah, if you were like fluent in a language and then all of a sudden you just haven't used it long enough (laughs) to forget, that's, that's a wild thing to think about. Yeah. Um, Simon, you got any advice for Yuli being a father? Yeah. Give me, hit me. It's, it's really hard to give general advice because every child will be so unbelievably different, especially because you're having a girl and all I have experience with is a boy. And from what I've heard, girls and boys as like infants and toddlers are, are generally speaking, very different to deal with. Um, but I would just say, just embrace it in those moments where you are so sleep deprived, you feel like you're losing your mind it'll put the hardest test to your relationship with your wife ever. And just like step back from the situation a bit and just like take it in because it's like the craziest stuff you'll ever experience when you're just like, <laughs> yeah. you all you do is want to sleep and <laughs> stop worrying about your child. But I mean, it's gotta keep going. It's like the never ending yeah. chore. The first couple months is just like, it's so, eye-opening to like wow this is this is now what i'm doing it's it's wild yeah, it's kind of like that uh that big topic nature versus nurture right and it's i, I definitely lean more on the side of nur- like you have such a huge impact on how this child's life is going to turn out it's it's really crazy you can really mold them in a whole different direction. So when you start thinking about it, it's kind of wild. (laughs) It's crazy. I can't even believe it. Like having something that is a hundred percent dependent on you to survive. Yeah. Yeah. The good thing is is kind of a bit controversial and there's actually a lot of, um, people out there who say that childs aren't super moldable, of course, to an extent. And uh, I mean, upbringing is a lot and just a healthy family life is of course really important, but there's a pretty big theory out there that like the main character is not very moldable. It's kind of, you get what you get kind of like when you get a pet. Yeah, I know. I, 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 I'm definitely not in the boat of like, it's a hundred percent one way or the other, but I am in the boat that you are able to have an impact on a child's life. Right. You can, uh, you can, yeah, you can lean them in a direction of hobbies, certain things they might like because they see you do it and they see you enjoy. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can go about it, but yeah, I'm a hundred percent in the, in the sense of where it's like, if you get raised by terrible parents, it doesn't mean that you're a hundred percent going to be a terrible person. Like you can, you can obviously figure it out yourself, but you know, I, I don't know if I've told this story on here before, but when I worked at a summer camp, I had two kids that weren't, were would not go into the pool when we had pool time because their mom told them that they would burn alive if they went into the water. And they a hundred percent believed that to the point where they were terrified of it. One of the counselors actually at one point, like picked it, picked one of them up 
to like put him in the water to show him that it was fine. And the kid just went ballistic as soon as he was like walking him towards the water. So now I'm not going to not good count. Good, good <laughs> that, camp. Counseling. That was a terrible move on that person's <laughs> part. Push him, push <laughs> him to walk the, by. See, it's fine. Um, it's but fine, I'm not, dude. I'm not that crazy. Like Hunter's crazy. Hunter believes that he can train his kid to believe a carrot is a treat. And I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I go that far down. I think, <laughs> I think the kid's going to show up to school and he's going to pull out a carrot and be like, or he's going to finish his whole meal and be like, yeah. And like take a <laughs> bite and some kid's going to have fun dip across from him. And some kid's going to have an oatmeal cream pie. And some kid's going to have an ice cream sandwich. And he's going to be like, wait a second. <laughs> what, are, what are those? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's cool. It's cool. It's, it's, it's also really cool to see how many, you know, we have two women right now that are touring that are both pregnant. It, mm-hmm. I, it seems like right now there's so many people on tour that are, you know, have kids or even are about to have kids. Crazy time. We're all growing up yeah. together. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, we are. <laughs>